a hotel that had CCTV cameras. They would have denied it. It was when our colleagues went out and took out the CCTV camera queen on social media that they hurriedly called a press conference. But not only did they abduct me in the middle of the night, when they were not satisfied with that impunity, they came in front of a judge in a federal high court in Abuja to abduct me in front of a judge. I mean, if you deny the one in the night, how about the one you did brazenly with impunity during the daytime? I was abducted in front of the judge. And when the judge gave an order that I should be released, their spokesperson, a PhD holder, Peter Apunaya, said that if I was released, I would be hit by a hit and run driver. He would be hit by, not me, by a hit and run driver. Those are some of the ridiculous things that this country has been through. But we must not forget that all this thing happened under the regime of Muhammad Buhari. And that is what is wrong with Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, when our leaders misbehave or commit crimes, we offer them pensions after they leave office. When leaders of civilized societies commit crimes, they are arrested and prosecuted for their crimes. The US that we imported our democracy and human rights virtues from has had democracy for 200 years. They have former president. Donald Trump has been charged four times with 91 different crimes, and there may be more. But Nigerian leaders who engage in corruption, abuse of human rights, are giving red carpet reception every day and everywhere, including the one that just left. The moment he left, the Nigerian government first paid for him to go and do medical checkup in London instead of putting me on the plane to go to the ICC, in the International Criminal Court. Because enforced appearances that we are talking about here are small compared to what the Buhari regime did in terms of human rights. You are not talking about people who were summarily executed, having been labeled as IPOB members, or the 3,000 persons, Shiites, that were killed and buried overnight. In Zaria, the person who did it, the governor of the place was about to be made minister. And he's now a reggae musician because they didn't make him a minister. But what I'm saying seriously is that these are serious egregious crimes, no doubt. But Nigeria is witness too many of these inhuman crimes, degrading treatment, torture of its citizens that we should not be appealing to government. We can't be appealing to the people who are responsible for committing the crime. We should take it over their head. Nigeria must reach a point where Nigerian leaders pay for their own crimes, whether they are in office or outside of office. That is my focus today. I would love one day, and I hope you guys are hearing me, and I see Channel TV is here, don't cut out this part of mine. Conversation. I would love to see one day Buhari handcuffed to pay for his crimes, if not in this country, in at the International Criminal Court of Justice. And that is why this conversation is very important. It's why we need an Amnesty International that is also doing its work. If the people of this country have been sued by Amnesty International over the years, they would have gone to the offices to start abducting you guys. You saw how they were organizing fake protests in front of Amnesty. Each time there's a report that the government doesn't like. I'm telling you, if they keep getting away with enforcing disappearance of activists, they will start doing it to international workers at Amnesty International as long as you are doing your real duties to society. And I hope serious about it, that Nigeria will get to a point where those who have committed these crimes, because these crimes, by the way, don't have statute of limitation. 
It doesn't matter whether you committed enforced appearances in 1960 or 2023. You can be punished for it at any age as long as you are alive. Even if you are not alive, we should still make it public that people understand what they did when they are alive to, uh, to seriously violate the rights of uh, the citizens of this country. And it applies to the military, and it applies to police officers, it applies to DSS officers, or anybody in, within Nigerian security agencies. The DSS officers behave as if they don't have name, family, and records. We know all their names. You were hired to work for the Nigerian people. If you have been working against the Nigerian people, no matter how long it takes, you must be made to pay for the atrocities you committed against the Nigerian people. Because when I went to the DSS, the guys were acting as if they are invisible. And sometimes they will tell you that nothing will happen. It is true that nothing will happen, but it is not true that nothing will happen forever. Some of them will start paying for their crimes after they have retired. Let them know this, because when people are kidnapped, when families are kidnapped or they die, they have families. They have children who have to suffer. I mean, look at this young lady here. She's saying that she had to drop out of school simply because of the irresponsibility of some DSS officers. If someone has committed a crime and you are sure they committed a crime, after arresting them, take them to court. Let the judiciary decide their fate. Don't take laws into your hands. And don't let anybody within the security agencies in Nigeria tell you that they were asked to go and do it. There's no protection for you being asked from other, from above, to go and commit crime. The Nuremberg, Nuremberg principles have made it very clear that you are primarily responsible, primarily responsible for your actions and inactions if you are a security agent in any country in the world. It doesn't, it's not limited to Nigeria. So don't come and tell me that, oh, it was our former director that asked him to go and assassinate somebody. You will face criminal charges of murder, and if it could be established that your former director sent you, both of you will face conspiracy charges, you will face the same and be entitled to the same number of years or whatever punishments are applicable to people who commit this kind of atrocities. It is important, again, to tell those of you who are in security agencies, because I know some of the DSS people are always in this gathering. Yeah? If you commit crimes, you will pay for it one day if it's established. And Nigeria must start establishing crimes, even for historical reasons, so that when we are ripe for punishment for these people, we won't find it difficult to find them and punish them. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Mr. Uh, before we, the next session will be uh, question and